What is up guys, welcome back to another Geek What video and today Intel are back with a bang and boy is it a big one. I'll be reviewing Asus's Z370 Maximus 10 motherboard, the successor to their hugely popular Maximus 9 board. Is it worth your hard earned cash and a place in your next Z370 Intel build? Let's dive in and find out. AMD's resurgence in 2017 so far has prompted Intel to react and fight back, both very poorly with X299 uh, and now in a very compelling way uh, with these Coffee Lake CPU releases. There's a whole host of brand new 8th gen chips that have come out from the i3 to the i7 on the consumer platform which use Intel's brand new LJ1151 V2 socket. Whilst this V2 socket on the motherboard appears the same as with Z170 and Z270, it's not actually backwards compatible and this is due to changes that have had to be made to the socket to accommodate for extra power delivery uh, to the new CPUs with more than 4 cores. Intel have been doing this for a while anyway, stinting the amount of backwards compatibility and every time that happens people moan and then go and buy the products anyway, so that's definitely an argument for another day. Now though, let's jump into the motherboard itself. Now much like its predecessor, the Maximus 9 Hero board, my review of which can be found in the card section now, it features a very, very nice aesthetic, uh, quite neutral with RGB accents, which I really, really like, with a similar overall feature set. You do of course get a few important incremental upgrades over the last generation though. Like the Hero 9 board, it's got four RAM DIMM slots supporting dual channel memory of course and XMP. The board also features two X16 length Gen 3 slots uh, with the metal shroud in metal armour to prevent GPU sag related damage. Uh, now when you've got one graphics card installed you'll be seeing the full X16 bandwidth in the top slot and when you've got two installed you'll see X8 across each of the cards in an SLI or Crossfire configuration. This reducing bandwidth isn't really going to be too much of an issue especially for current generation GPUs and it's the same story on the Ryzen AM4 side of things too and if you really want X16 across both graphics cards X299 and Threadripper is where you're sadly going to have to look. Also like its predecessor it's got a very well thought out rear IO with clear CMOS and BIOS flashback buttons. You also get a BIOS USB port for flashing a BIOS with no CPU installed, two USB 2.0 ports the other of which supporting ASUS's keybot technology. You get display port and HDMI connections for graphics output straight off the CPU, four USB 3 ports, two 10 gigabit 3.1 gen 2 ports of the type A and type C variety, gigabit ethernet, uh, gold plated 7.1 uh, audio outputs in the form of of course a 3.5mm cable and optical audio outputs. One thing I really would like to see here as standard would be Wi-Fi. It's offered on competing boards at competing prices and it's a bit disappointing to see it not added here. I'd also, uh, in an ideal world, like to see a second gigabit Ethernet port, although I understand this is a feature reserved for the slightly higher end boards on the market. Wi-Fi though would really be nice to have. Unlike its predecessor though, the Maximus 9 Hero board, it's got a redesigned top heatsink. If there's a tad bigger and edgier, I actually really, really like it. RGB implementation has also been expanded, retaining the great chipset logo and IO shield lighting, but adding RGBs under a new M.2 heatsink that looks pretty superb. The motherboard, like the Hero 9, boasts two M.2 slots, which is neat for the further use of fast storage. Remember with this being a consumer platform though, PCIe lanes are often at a premium and depending on your GPU and expansion card configuration you may have to take different uh, PCIe lane configurations into mind and I'll link the appropriate manual documentation for this in the description below. God, that was a mouthful. Another feature this gains over its predecessor and of course its competition is an inbuilt rear IO shield. Gone are the days if you've got to feel around the back of your case trying to install that finicky IO shield only for one day in your life to cut your finger half open. That did happen to me. Uh, this motherboard deals with all of that for you. It's really nice to see Asus carry down a feature that would normally be reserved for the top one or two motherboards in a lineup. And that's why I really like where this uh, Z370 Maximus board is positioned. You get all the features that the Z370 chipset entails, such as extra PCIe lanes, better connectivity, better I.O., all that good stuff, at a price that doesn't break the bank, especially for the features you're getting for your money. On board you also get a whole host of very thorough connections and it's not just the IO shield that gets some good treatment. You get a whopping 8 4 pin fan headers, yes 
thank you. I've been waiting and asking for this in innumerable number of motherboard reviews. What this allows you to do is it allows you to plug all of your fans directly onto your motherboard headers for much better optimization within great motherboard software suites. It means you can run your fans super quiet, cool, efficient, uh, and really, really get some good thermals in there as well, directly from Windows or your motherboard BIOS, which I really, really appreciate. Once again, thank you Asus for doing this. It's so cheap to have more fan headers, and this is just a nice, good, solid number to have. Up top of the motherboard, you get the four plus four pin CPU power, as to be expected. You get three of the four pin fan headers previously mentioned, one of which is specifically designated for an all-in-one liquid cooling pump. You also get a four pin RGB header uh, for generic RGB strips or compatible uh, RGB accessories like these Cooler Master fans. And finally, you get a Q code display. This is gonna be really useful in the event that something goes wrong when debugging what is up with your computer. It will give you an appropriate hexadecimal code that then relates to something in your manual which will instruct you on what exactly the problem is. It makes sorting issues out way, way easier. Down the side of the motherboard, there's the ever legendary Memo K button, which will help you to bypass initial memory issues on startup. Uh, you also get a 3D print mount for the seven or so people that own a 3D printer in 2017. Uh, you also get the 20 plus four pin motherboard power connector, a USB 3.1 header for super fast USB-C connections on cases like Inwin's beautiful 805 case. I mean, just look at it. I'll put a link in the description below, it's absolutely gorgeous. Continue down and you'll find the next of the four pin fan headers, ideally located for an intake fan, uh, and the aforementioned SATA ports with two more fan headers below, uh, water pump and water flow connectors for any custom water coolers out there, uh, and the second of two M.2 slots, the other residing under the aforementioned heatsink with fancy RGB lighting. Down the bottom of the motherboard, the connections are once again equally thorough and working from left to right. You've got the HD audio connector just off to the side of the Supreme FX audio chipset. Uh, you also get power reset, safe boot and retry physical buttons, the Asus TPM header that you'll probably never use, uh, a singular USB 3 header, Two would have been nice, especially one down the right-hand side of the board, right-angled ideally for the best cable management options. You also get two USB 2 headers down the bottom here, another fan header, the second RGB header, speaker connector, and finally the front panel pins. Asus are kind enough to include uh, one of these front panel block connectors, which allows you to connect the front panel connectors uh, off the motherboard first, and then install the whole lot onto the board in one go, which is super, super useful. Talking of things in the box, the unboxing experience is equally fantastic for this tier of the board. Like last year, you get welcomed into the Republic, so to speak, with the motherboard up top and a load of accessories down below. You get some stickers, a coaster, and a driver's CD. I mean, there really is only one place this belongs. You also get the manual, some cable labels, which are really useful for SATA cables, M.2 standoffs and screws, a CPU installation tool that makes CPU installation easy. It's not necessary at all. You also get a Q-connected cable, the aforementioned front panel block, a high bandwidth hard SLI bridge, and finally a fan mount thingy for these tiny fans uh, that don't come included, which is good. As always, jumping into software, the Asus included suite is fantastic. From the aforementioned Asus Aura Sync, which I'll jump into more detail with in a moment's time, to Asus's flagship five-way optimization. What this does is it takes the hard work out of overclocking and adjusting fan speeds and the like. It will automatically overclock your CPU, as loosely explained by uh, the pseudocode on screen, taking your CPU up by a set increment and running a stability test. If it's stable, it'll keep going up until the CPU is no longer stable, reverting to the highest possible stable clock speed. The result of this will depend, of course, on your cooling solution and the like, uh, but I was seeing some really good results on my i5 uh, 8th gen chip. The software will also automatically overclock your RAM for you uh, and adjust fan speeds, creating different presets from silent uh, to turbo to whirlwind. Unfortunately, it's not actually called Whirlwind, but it will allow you to put your fans right up to full speed if you're feeling super, super mental. In terms of configuring this five-way optimization, there are two ways to do it. You can either do it through the BIOS or in Windows in their superb AI Suite 3 software. 
In this software, you can also create different rules and exceptions uh, that will trigger user-created presets when you open certain programs or processes. For example, my editing software, Premiere, which is very buggy, uh, won't deal with my Ryzen 7 chip over here whilst overclocked. So what I can do is I can revert the overclock temporarily when that software, that process is running, which is really, really cool. I can also uh, say that when certain applications are open, turn the fans up to the turbo preset to get the best cooling and a nice efficient performance to prevent any thermal throttling. You also, of course, get Asus's Aura Sync technology, which I said I'll come to in a moment's time. This software will not only allow you to individually change the RGB zones on your motherboard, but it'll also allow you uh, to change RGB zones on Asus peripherals like keyboard and mice. You also can, of course, change uh, graphics card LEDs as well. And you can also use compatible accessories such as fans, uh, power supplies, that I promise you that's a thing, uh, and RAM to create a really cohesive system. You can then link different RGB zones together to create system-wide or even setup-wide spanning effects for a really, really cool experience and design. Whether you want to go all out disco mode and rave with the lights reacting to your music, or you want a more still breathing effect, uh, this software can deal with all of that, which is really, really nice. Overall though, I do really, really like this motherboard. It sits at a great place in the market, giving you a premium motherboard on that Z370 chipset that isn't stupidly priced. From the RGB zones, which look superb on board, uh, M.2 cooling, which has kind of been long overdue on motherboards like this, uh, to wide spanning support for a whole host of other accessories in both RGB form and in their five-way optimization software. If you are looking at building a high-end Coffee Lake system, this may very well be the motherboard for you, and I can highly recommend it. I'll leave links to this motherboard for a range of regions and retailers from B&H to Amazon uh, in all different countries in the description below if you'd like to pick one up. And there's our affiliate link, so I do earn a kickback commission if you do go and buy it from them, just to be fully transparent with you. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my upcoming Coffee Lake content, which I'll show in a singular playlist up here now. Subscribe with this button down here, follow my Twitter, it's at GeekWatt, and click this thing to view a random video that YouTube thinks you're going to like. As always, though, we'll see you in the next GeekWatt video.